Sackett with Lee J. Sackett Incorporated. We are at the Minnesota State Fair with a large display of tractors on Lee Avenue. Each day of the fair will feature a different one of these fascinating pieces of history. Today, let's focus on this Minneapolis Moline Twin City JTO. To start the tractor, we first have to turn on the gas. We gotta open up the side panel. Over here is the gas. Next, whenever you start a tractor, you gotta make sure it's in neutral, which this one is. This is the kill switch, and we have to make sure that this is open so that the tractor can actually start. Now it's time to crank it. In 1929, the Minneapolis Threshing Company in Hopkins, Minnesota merged with Minneapolis Steel and Machinery and the Moline Plow Company to form the Minneapolis Moline Power Equipment Company. Until 1963, Minneapolis Moline manufactured over 38 different tractor models in their Hopkins plant along Excelsior Boulevard. In 2015, Doran Companies began work with the city of Hopkins to build a multifamily residential property at this site and eventually decided to name it in honor of Hopkins history with Minneapolis Moline. Inspired by this history, Doran began researching Minneapolis Moline tractors and eventually purchased seven tractors. They altered the Moline's building design in order to showcase their collection. During this process, Lee J. Sackett Incorporated was hired to service, maintain, and repair these tractors. They continue to service the tractors to keep the collection in great shape. This tractor runs very quietly because it has a really good muffler and the exhaust runs out the back, so the sound is taken pretty far away. It's also streamlined so that um, branches don't catch on the tractor since it was mainly used in orchards. So this year, Twin City model tractors, first produced by Minneapolis Steel and Machinery before Minneapolis Moline, were very reliable and popular with farmers. Because of this, Minneapolis Moline continued to produce several Twin City models. This 1936 JTO is one of only 157 produced. The O in JTO signifies that it was built to be used in orchards. The streamlined sheet metal was intended to brush branches over the tractor, rather than catch on them. When it was brought to Lee J. Sackett Incorporated, this tractor had been previously restored. However, it appeared that most of the restoration had been done to make the exterior of the tractor look good. It didn't start and run very well, and under the sheet metal it was very dirty, had many leaks, and was generally in rough shape. Lee's team disassembled the tractor and rebuilt everything that needed to be addressed. Then it was sandblasted, primed, painted, and reassembled. The sheet metal for this tractor underwent a different process. Lee's team could tell that there was a fair amount of body filler in the panels. This was confirmed when the parts were sandblasted. The sheet metal required extensive repair. Rather than just fill the dents and dings with body filler again, Lee's team pounded out dents, cut out and replaced damaged panels, and brought the sheet metal back to the original condition. Body filler was only used lightly to cover up hammer marks and some remaining rest bits. The sheet metal parts were primed and then sanded. Then they were inspected and additional tweaks were made before primed again. When everything was perfect, the sheet metal was sprayed with sealer, followed by several coats of battleship gray paint. Thank you for watching. Check in tomorrow for our next features tractor.